Well, I guess that video did pretty decently. So a good amount of changes has happened in Cry of Fear speedrunning, so I've decided to make another video. And also, the game has seen a bit of a resurgence recently. It's quite lovely. Although for the speedrunning community, it's been very quiet. And it's really only two players who've been trying to get the world record, with the third place being a whole two and a half minutes behind. That's why I've been wanting to make this video. To get you guys to speedrun, and come take the world record from me. Don't worry, I'll show you all the tricks on how to beat it. Let's get straight into it. To get started, you'll start by downloading Cryofear from the Steam page. Just go search for it and download it. As of now, you're technically able to speedrun the game, but because of some buggy elements and quality of life improvements, it's recommended to do these things before starting to speedrun. First, you need to download Mad Simon. It's a simple add-on that helps with verification of your run. Sometimes, at the end of speedruns, the stat screens doesn't appear and can invalidate your run. This add-on makes sure that it won't happen. To download, head to the resource tab and download the Mad Simon plugin. After that, unzip it and then go to your Steam library, right click Cry of Fear, Properties, Install Files, Browse, thereafter open the Cry of Fear folder and put the crash rpt.dll file in the folder cl underscore dlls. After that, create a folder called add-ons and put the madsimon.dll file in there. Once you go into a level in Cry of Fear, you should see a heads up display in the top right of your screen. If you see this, then you have downloaded it correctly. If you do not see it, put dash GL in your launch options to force hardware acceleration. We're going to change some settings that will make it easier for you to run the game. The biggest thing we're going to change is the brightness, so we can see everything in the game. Go to options, advanced settings, and change the brightness from 0 to 0 0.3. The menu also contains other settings that are very useful. For users with low-end PCs, you can turn all of them off except a few. Subtitles should be left on, and double tap dodge should be set to disable. Screen grain should also be set to zero as well, as it will destroy your video quality. As for the other effects, it's up to you to leave them on or off. But for maximum performance, I recommend you turn most of them off. There are also some settings that can only be changed through the console. To open the console, Press the tilde key right below your escape key. For me, it's this one. Here are some commands. This command increases FOV significantly. You can change this to whatever you want, but 1.1 to 1.7 is recommended. Developer 1 shows what's happening in the console and unlocks the 60 FPS cap. Seal underscore show FPS 1 just shows the FPS. And this one's important. Clock window 0 stops your character from getting stuck for half a second between loading sections. Movement is the most important thing in Cry Fear, and for this game, it's a little bit more difficult than just bunny hopping. This game has a stamina feature that goes down whenever you jump, run, or dodge, or use the sledgehammer. Like the last video, this meter is going to be pure pain for you and everything you love. A good part of speedrunning this game is making sure that the stamina bar doesn't go all the way down to zero. If you do that, then Simon will go much slower for around 4 to 7 seconds, so be cautious of your stamina. This stamina recovery timer resets each time you jump, unless you gain stamina from syringes. Crouching increases the speed at which you recover stamina, and should be used when you're not moving, such as for any set piece that requires waiting. You can also do it while dodge jumping in midair, more on this later. If you're about to enter a cutscene, you can use all of your stamina, as most of the time you'll gain just enough stamina back as to not go slower. The main part of speedrunning this game is using your stamina as efficiently as possible, prioritizing speed over anything else. This means that sprinting is not recommended for most situations, which only gives a measly 300 speed. Instead, we are going to learn dodge jumping. Dodge jumping is the primary way to go fast in this game, and is the thing you're going to have to learn consistently, as you'll be using it for the most part of the run. The trick works by jumping right after dodging forward by pressing ALT. Right after pressing ALT, you will gain an incredible amount of speed, which quickly dies down. We like speed, and in order for us to keep this speed, we need to jump. Jumping makes it so that any speed you had while going fast on the ground is kept. The ideal speed is about 450 units per second. For comparison, the walking speed is 225 units per second. I recommend that you spend some time in custom game modes or other parts of the map to practice jumping. After you do a dodge jump successfully, you can start to bunny hop, also called B hopping. To bunny hop after a dodge jump, do not press any keys. All you need to do is jump right after landing. 
The more precise you get it, the less speed you'll lose. Now it's very hard to time your jump perfectly, so instead of pressing spacebar, we bind the mouse wheel to jump. You can do this in the console or just in the options menu here. For the console, it looks like this. Bind M wheel up plus jump. You can do the same with down. Bind M wheel down plus jump. Now that's cool and all, but how do we move during bunny hopping? There's a trick called air strafing. When you are in mid-air, move your mouse to the side and press the corresponding strafe button. For example, you can press the D key while moving your mouse to the right. This allows you to move right during a bunny hop. For going left, do the opposite, holding down A while moving your mouse to the left. Make sure you are not holding W during the strafe, as that won't allow you to strafe properly. Now you can combine the two and move both left and right at the same time. This type of movement actually gains speed. However, you can't flick back and forth super fast like Half-Life or CSGO, as you'll lose speed. Another thing we do in order to increase speed is by hugging the wall, and is called wall boosting. By moving into a flat wall at a 45 degree angle, you can gain speed up to around 330 speed, which is faster than running. This movement is especially useful in vent shafts, where walls are always flat. So instead of going 75 speed, you can get to 115 speed. You'll want to use this as much as possible. However, be careful, as not all walls are perfectly flat. Some have bumps, pieces sticking out, props in the way, and some walls are not even flat at all. So for those walls, I recommend you just ignore them and walk as usual. Or dodge jump. That covers the essentials of movement. Of course, any speedrun is not without tricks and glitches. And Cryofear is no different. Since we're running on the Source engine, wait no, Gold Source? Oh, you're old Cryofear. The first glitch we're going to be tackling is a simple one. You can interact with things through the walls. This includes doors, loot, and any other item. It works the same way as just interacting with objects normally. But you might have to get into a sneaky position. The tutorial will explain where to do so. Before skipping a cutscene, you can still somewhat move before skipping it, which will place you further into the level than just doing nothing. The run will tell you later how to do it and what keys to press. Water glitch is also another extremely important trick. This trick stops the stamina bar from going down when jumping. This happens in the sick apartments level, which can be reached around halfway through the game. The run will explain the setup later in the video. Now there isn't just good glitches in this game, there are also bad ones. Even though Cryofear has gained some updates since the first video I uploaded, there are still some bugs that are annoying. If you play the game for too long without quitting the game, textures might begin to glitch out, and you will become more susceptible to crashes, missing sounds, and glitched AI. AI, after some time, gets completely confused as to where you are and start getting activated before you even meet them. In general, Reset the game after an hour of gameplay, which is usually shorter than a full game. Unlockables. This game has unlockables, which we use in order to gain a faster time. Some people do not want to speedrun with unlockables, and thus we have a no unlockables category. This tutorial, unlike the previous, will go over both unlockables and no unlockables. The main thing that we need from the unlockables is Simon's book. This book shoots out fire, which deals an incredible amount of damage. This makes boss fights significantly easier. The speedrun will place these little subtitles in if it indicates a run is talking about no unlockables. Runners who play with unlockables should just ignore it, vice versa for those who play without unlockables. There is also the camera, which freezes enemies when you take pictures of them, but it doesn't work for bosses. Take it if you're starting out on speedrunning. To get all of the unlockables, you can either complete each one of them manually, or you can add this funny little file called scriptsettings.dat that automatically adds all of the unlockables. You can find it in the description or in the resource tab on speedrun.com. Put it in the cryofear folder and replace the one that is currently in it. This part is not needed, but it's just for those who want to save a few more seconds. We are going to need to bind a few keys to places that are easier to press as well as any keys that help us during cutscenes. If we want to use an item in our inventory, but don't want to go into our inventory and manually use it, we can use a command called inventory use. We need to bind it to a key though, 
So let's say we want to bind our fourth inventory slot to the 4 key. That command will look like this. Bind 4 inventory use 4. This binds the 4 key to the 4th slot in our inventory. You can also do this with any other key you'd want. For one cutscene later in the game, we have to drop our gun on the ground right after reloading, as it saves time by not having to wait for the reload animation. We can't bind our other number key to the same thing as before because it's already being used by inventory use. Therefore, we use the function keys. So it becomes bind f4 inventory drop 4 which will drop the 4th item in your inventory on the ground. You can also type the command in the console if you want. For people who plan on speedrunning without unlockables, you'll need to set up a bind that turns your FPS high, as FPS messes with the enemy's turn speed, making them easier to hit. Bind a key to FPS underscore max 400 or something higher, above 100 at least. Also remember to bind a similar key back to FPS max 100 as playing with FPS higher than 100 also slows down your movement. There are going to be a lot of cutscenes in this game, and so you want to skip them a lot. In order to skip them, we just press enter, but that can be hard to press, as it is far away from your keyboard. Therefore, we have to rebind the enter key to something else. However, this is not possible to do with the console, so we have to change it to something else using software. The most common method is to use the software that comes with your mouse, such as if you have a Logitech or Razer mouse, and use the rebind method to rebind your enter key to the side of your mouse. Of course, not everyone has such mouse, and is probably using their $3 mouse from their parents' setup. So instead, you can use auto hotkey to rebind a key like F to the enter key. To do this, go to auto hotkey's website and download the software. Open up the program and click new script and click OK. A new text file should appear and you want to type F colon colon enter into it. This rebinds the F key to enter, but you can also bind it to any other key that you would want. If you want to bind it to a different key, you can use ChatGPT to write a script to rebind the enter key to your preferred choice, like mouse 4. It is important to note, macros are not allowed. And while yes, there is a lot that can be done with macros, such as the wait command, for the time being, this isn't allowed on the leaderboards. Over the past few years since my original video, the game has become significantly more stable, allowing for us to speedrun a full run without saving or quitting. This means that we can save during the run and actually have it functioning as a save. Thank you, Andreas. This means that if you die, you can load back to a save and your time will roll back to when you saved, thus not losing any time. You cannot load or save more than two times, otherwise your run will be disqualified. You can experiment where you want to save and load, but try to do it in places that are difficult, such as platforming and other difficult tricks. This rule prevents runs from being segmented, which is not in the spirit of speedrunning. However, this means that if you want to practice certain sections, you need to save in the recorder, which only has 5 saves, minus 1 for the runs you'll be doing. This is not very efficient, so we've created some saves in every level that you can just load up to practice. To get the saves, go to the resource tab and click the any% percent practice saves with water glitch. This will give you a folder that you'll need to unzip. Take all of the saves, copy them, and in the main Cry of Fear folder, place them in the Save folder. Once you've done that, you can open the console and type Load, followed by a Q and a number. To find the correct one, go ahead and load up a bunch of different maps to find which one is the closer to the one you want. However, this is kind of stupid and inefficient, so instead, I will update a counter in the top right that tells which map is the one you should type in the console to practice set section. We verify runs by recording, either live streamed or recorded normally. We do not accept demos or end screen stats as verifications. For LiveSplit, start by downloading the software from livesplit.org and installing it. After that, Go to the resource tab and download the splits called any% percent with water glitch with subsplits. If you don't want to do water glitch, you can get the one that doesn't have it in the name. After that, go ahead and open up the live splits window and right click on it and click edit splits. In there, you should see a line called auto splitting and load removal by Darla. 
make sure that you press the activate button. When the button says deactivate, the auto splitter has been activated. After that, right click on live split, press compare against, and then click game time. This will make the timer pause during loads and pauses. Now you can place the live split window on a second monitor, or you can have your game in windowed mode and place it on the side. You can also play full screen without viewing the live split if you have OBS streaming the window. Speaking of OBS, for OBS, go to their website, then download it and install it. To set it up, start by opening both Cry of Fear and Live Split together. Then after that, click this plus icon and press Game Capture. Click OK. Capture a specific window and set it to your Cry of Fear game. Then click OK. If you want to delete an object, click on the item and then click the trash can. For Live Split, instead of Game Capture, do Window Capture. Click OK and set it to your live split window. After that, look at the scene window and place the live split window somewhere nice. Do not place it in the top right, as that's where Matt Simon is placed. For the settings, you just want to put the output file somewhere you can get it easily. Remember to enable hardware acceleration and put your bitrate somewhere reasonable like 2000 kilobits per second. Higher values means higher quality, but lower speed. The bitrate depends on the speed of your computer, so you might want to mess around with it to figure out what's best for you. To livestream, you want to go into settings, then stream, and select your service such as YouTube RTMPS or Twitch. Then you click connect account and log in with your YouTube or Twitch. After that, you can click manage broadcast. Make sure you type up a good title and set it to public. After that, a stream will appear on your channel and you can start it whenever you want by pressing start streaming. This has been the basics of recording. However, there are a billion different settings and dials that you can mess with yourself. This video is not about that. So you can go watch a different video if you need further explanation on recording. Please don't actually leave though, I need internet views for validation. Extras. First of all, I don't recommend speedrunning the game without having played the game at least once or twice. It's an absolutely fantastic game, and Andreas and his team really deserve the credit for what they've done. Second of all, being a horror game, I recommend lowering the volume and the music. I recommend turning it down a little bit, although not completely. Having a little bit of quiet music really helps figuring out if you're ahead or behind, and filling out empty nothingness. You're allowed to have music and sound effects in the background of your speedrun, but it must not overpower the game at all. Sound is required for verification. The tutorial will go over every part of the speedrun, difficult and simple. Some tricks are worth learning more than others, and some you shouldn't even touch if you're just starting out. Green indicates if the trick is relatively simple and is vital for big time save. When this shows up, this means you should learn it early on. Yellow indicates if a trick is slightly difficult and saves less time than the others, or is more difficult. Do these if you've done two or more runs. Red indicates if a trick only saves a small bit of time. Do these tricks if you've played for a significant amount of time and are willing to shave off every possible second. Do not do these as beginners. Here we go. To start a run, you can either click new game and press easy, or you can start by binding the key to map C nightmare. Although if you do that, make sure that the difficulty is set to 1 when you do, making it so it's set to easy. Go through the black bay as normal, except this time, you can't run, so you have to dodge jump through the dark instead. Make sure to take a picture of the giant head for good luck. Make your way to the underground passage and take the door on your left and grab Simon's book and head out. If you're having trouble with Soul Runner or starting early on, you can grab the camera as well. For those who run with no unlockables, just ignore the door. Head on over your way to the plaza. We're going to get a username and password. The first paper shows the password, and the second one shows the username. You can grab the second paper through the wall up here. Head to the cafe and punch in the username and password, and remember the code. If this is your first run of you starting up the game and getting the code, your notes in your inventory should be fine, but if you do a second run, your code is likely to be bugged in your notes tab, so make sure you remember it in the computer. Punch in the code. I recommend starting with the numbers that take the fewest presses, followed by the ones that take the most. 
dodge jump to the door and skip the cutscene. While in the cutscene, move forward and move your mouse to the right, so when you exit the cutscene, it automatically puts you in the front of the door. Tap the recorder to get rid of the message. Get into the cutscene and kill the man with the book. For no unlockables, you can either use your knife to slash him constantly with the fast attack and skip the cutscene, or you can take a step back towards the left and duke the enemy and go right past him. Grab the syringe that's on the ground and head down. Either kill the enemy or duke him by standing on the right and moving past him when he walks forward. For this one, you can run straight at him and move past him. Hold down here and wait for the enemy to finish his animation, so you can walk right past him. Flip the switch and go. Place your syringe in the third position of your quick use while in the level transition. This scaffolding requires some time to practice, so here's the console command to load into this part to practice. First jump on the main scaffolding, then the vertical plank, then the small metal rod onto the second rod and jump from that to the platform. Then use the door through the floor to get into the apartments. Once you get into the apartments, go over here and jump on the railing and stay crouched. Then while crouched, jump towards this bit of the roof here and press use to open the door on the fourth floor. Then once inside, go forward into the cutscene and as it is ending, move backwards right and crouch before skipping. Then get the rope through the wall here and go to the balcony. There is a trigger on the balcony that triggers a cutscene. You want to move into it and press 5 to put down the rope as it is fading to black. Use the rope to go down. Then before skipping the cutscene, move forward, which will land you further into the room. The whole amount I talked about there is just a minor time save, so if you're having trouble with it, ignore it for now. This woman is in the way, so we duke her by peeking into the balcony, moving back and then moving forward again so we can pass her. Get to the room with the cassette player. We need the woman to trick her into using the cassette player, so go in the somewhat corner of the TV, and right as the woman stops up and is about to hit us, jump and crouch, and the screen should fade to black when she tries to hit it. If it doesn't work, you gotta make sure she isn't too close to the TV and is not hitting you. After the screen goes black, skip the cutscene and use the TV again to tell the code for the elevator. This trick requires some practice. Jump crouch on the bit of the door here and jump to use the top of the door for a minor time save. Type the code and crouch while it waits to come up. After going in, hold A and S together before skipping to get slightly down the stairs. You can dodge down the stairs to save some time. Head to Sawers, and here's the fight that can happen. For unlockables runners, you can just use the book out of him to kill him instantly by shooting at him and then going around his back and killing him. For no unlockables runners, you have to press the bind that increases your FPS as told in chapter 0.7, which will make the sawer turn slower. Get somewhere behind his back and slash him until he becomes down, and after that, get as many hits on him as possible. On the second try, increase the FPS back to normal and move so you're facing him, so that saw runner can move a little bit. This is required as if you just slash him right away after getting up, he won't go back down again. After he moves, increase the FPS again and slash him until he is dead. Start by moving towards the door, then dodge jump over the monster and try to hold momentum, although this is a bit difficult. Go to the left and up. Wait for the animation to play and head down to the door. The code is 5247. This code doesn't change. Head on through the saw runner area. You can dodge on these small bits sticking out for some good momentum. Go through this area like normal. You can dodge jump into the vents to save some time, but it's a bit difficult. Just head on through this area. You can go past these enemies right here. Since going down the ladder takes too long, just fall down. Dodge or jump whenever you land, so that the fall damage animation gets cancelled. Make sure that you have at least 86 HP or more, as if you don't, you will begin to limp due to low health. For this part, you can kill everyone in the room, which is safer, or if you're giga chat, you can pop a syringe and type the code while you're getting beaten. The code is 279 something 
with the last number being randomly generated, so you'll have to guess. If you're playing no unlockables, duke the first enemy by staying in the left and then going to the right to slash them. Do the same with the other enemy, but do the opposite places instead, right, left. After you kill them both, drop your knife as you won't be needing it anymore. Grab the lighter. If you're playing no unlockables, get the shotgun as well. Head on back. If you grab the shotgun, there will be enemies waiting for you outside, so just run into the room with the fuel. Use it, grab the syringe, and then wait until the fire animation is almost done and then go outside so you can avoid the enemies. Grab the key and head on into maze. After skipping the cutscene, don't move and look to your left and turn the valve. Then bolt to the other side of the room and get on top of the valve and turn it. You should get stuck. After turning the second valve, spam the door next to you. After the cutscene ends, skip it and you should be on the other side of the door. You can get a syringe through the locker here. If Maze does not die within 2 hits, then your game was not set to easy difficulty. Restart by pressing escape and hitting new game and then easy. Live split will automatically fix the time. You can use the door through the ball here. Go towards Mace and align yourself with the door. Go for it and right as you pass over his body, use the saw using your inventory use bind and open the door back. Once you skip the cutscene, you should skip the 2 second load going through the door. Grab the syringe and head on through to the nightmare section. Dodge down these stairs as best you can. Go through this environment as fast as possible. Use a syringe if needed. Make sure you crouch while dodge jumping as you can hit your head on the laps here. Head through this area like normal. Grab the syringe on the ground. You can dodge up the stairs here and get flinged up. Use all of your stamina towards the bit of the tree to trigger the cutscene and skip it. Head through the vents. Make sure to look at the walls at a 45 degree angle to go faster through them. Run over to the bit here and crouch beside the guy. He should despawn in the right position. I would recommend that you don't look at the wall straight away and instead ease into the wall as to gain the most speed. Grab the shotgun shelves. There are two potential crawl response here and here. Grab the Glock mag here. This next part is Saw Runner. For no unlockables users, use the button that unlocks your FPS to very high and duke the Saw Runner into the side, then run back into the room he was in and grab the AR-15. If it is too difficult, you can duke Saw Runner normally and go back to the previous level and back, so that he despawns, although this loses a bit of time. For unlockables, just run away from him, or shoot him with the camera if you've picked it up. During the Saw Runner's chase, there are some points on the floor where two different faces intersect, where you can get stuck, so be careful with them. Head to the end of the railing and hold W and D together before skipping to get out of the trash faster, then move along through the level as usual. We're going to be using a syringe later on for a trick that requires significant stamina, so it's recommended that you take damage from the enemies in this area. Make sure that your total health does not go below 25, which is when you start to limp. Dodge down the stairs and head to the platform. Dodge jump to the statue and reposition yourself and then dodge jump to the outside of the map. Jump up to the small bit of plank here and then stand up. Don't go too close to the wall as you can get stuck. After loading, dodge backwards. Use the door here to get back inbounds. Grab the syringe here. Kill the bed here. 
You can ignore that second one, but for unlockables, I recommend killing them as they are very annoying. Head on through, and kill this enemy. Equip your phone and wait for the cutscene to finish. While waiting, I'm going to talk about the boss fight that is going to happen. For unlockables, it's relatively simple. Just shoot fire at the carcass. The less distance between you and the boss, the more damage you deal. For no unlockables, you will have to use the AR that you picked up earlier. Remember where it is located in your inventory, because you will be dropping it later through binds. It is recommended that you set it to single fire if carcass moves too far away and burst if he is too close to you. Press C for it. After you spend a mag, reload your weapon, then drop it, and pick it up again. The default fire mode will be set to burst when picking up the weapon. Once he is very low HP, shoot him once more so that the cutscene starts of the carcass death, and move towards the right here so that you get the message, do you want to escape? Once the animation cutscene starts, press yes and skip the cutscene. This saves you from having to jump down on the balcony and through the door back. This trick still allows us to keep ending 4. Back we go. You can spend all of your stamina getting here if you're good enough at bee hopping. Dig up the hole and grab the syringe through the wall here. You can fire the book to remove the black screen. We're going to need to use a syringe in the future, so it's recommended to get around 50 health from getting hit from the enemies. After you get your health low, they will likely block your path in the future, so either burn them up with the book or shoot your shotgun until it runs out. We won't be needing it anymore, so you can drop it after running out of ammo. Move to the building. Jump and use the door through the wall here. There are three methods to get on the roof. You can dodge jump here and slide up the ramp to the roof, which is the fastest, but requires a lot of practice. Even I can't do it. The second method is to get on the edge of the roof here. There's a gap in the fence. Run, jump, and crouch to make it. Then alt jump to the end. If it's too difficult, you can take the normal route, which loses around 10 seconds. You don't need to go up the final ladder, you can just jump up here and here. For no unlockables, you need to go over here and grab the two AR mags for the boss fight and then use the second or third method to get to the roof. Do what I told you to do before, and then dodge down the stairs after skipping the cutscene. Head on over to Sophie's body. You can use all of your stamina here, but it requires good bee hops to do so. Be careful with the intersections between textures, they can stop you pretty easily. Grab the keycard before the cutscene starts and move backwards. Head back to Teal Trading. Grab the Glock ammo here. Grab the syringe here. For no unlockables, shoot one of the crackheads in the head and pick up their pistols. As of now, you should drop your AR as you won't be needing it anymore. If you don't have any ammo left, Walk up to one of them and wait until they commit game over and grab their pistol. Head on through like normal. Run here for one second to prevent the saw runner from slashing you instantly on this turn. You don't need to close the door here. Saw runner stops automatically. Now comes scaffolding. There are four methods. The fastest method is getting on top of this plank, then jumping towards the lamp and repositioning yourself. Then dodge jump over here, and then dodge jump to the final platform. This requires significant stamina, so if you've taken plenty of damage previously, you can use a syringe to regain your stamina. The second method is to go through the apartments like normal, and jump to this platform, and dodge jump to the last platform. This loses 1 to 4 seconds over the fastest method, and is much safer. The third method goes the same route, instead we go here and crouch jump, reposition, and jump up. Then we go into the apartment and kill the crackhead and go on. This loses 4 to 7 seconds over the fastest method. The fourth method is being a baby and doing the platform normally. 
which is kind of risky as there are more platforms. This loses over 10 seconds over the fastest method. Head on into the college as usual. With this door, make sure that you are looking directly at it, as if you don't, you could open the door from the other side and go back to where you already are. After that, head on out. Just make your way back like usual. There's not much to do here other than dodge jumping a lot. You can use the door through the wall here. We need to get rid of the grub blocking our way, so we need to do the puzzle like usual. You can grab a syringe and glock ammo through the wall here. Press the right switch and then the left one and head out. You can do it the other way around, but you will have a much shorter window to enter the door. You can dodge up the escalators at the very end to get launched. This works on all escalators that are moving, but needs practice. Peek the corridor to aggravate any enemies that might be in the hallway, then duke them by going to the right. Fall down the ladder and use a syringe while falling down. Make sure that you have at least 55 HP, otherwise the fall will kill you. When you land, you can perform the dodge jump in the opposite direction of the ladder to propel you faster and skip the fall damage animation. Go up the ladder and use all of your stamina here. Use a syringe here if you haven't already. Continue through this area like normal. You can sprint here if it gets too difficult to dodge jump. You can also hop on top of the fan and go through but be careful as if you don't go fast enough, you could get stuck and potentially die. For this fan on the left, you need to be careful as if you step too far into the left part, you could get killed. Grab the ammo. Remember to hug the wall at a 45 degree angle to go faster. You can either get on top of this pipe here and then dodge jump to the vent or go the traditional route. You might need to jump at the end. Go left and kill the enemies in front, the one behind can't do enough damage to seriously hurt you. Run or dodge jump here. You are still speed running, remember that. Press E on the kitty for good luck. Fall down the ladder and jump when you reach the bottom. After jumping, crouch and go through the right vent. Dodge off the box and get to the switch. Flip it. And slow down. Save your stamina until the doors open. Get on top of the ledge and dodge jump to the end. Be careful of your stamina bar. Jump into the vent and head along. You can sprint here if you want, but remember to hug the wall so you don't fall down. Kill the enemy here. Head on over to the doctor cutscene and skip it. Then head on over to get the key. Grab a syringe as well. You can get rid of the mobile phone battery as you aren't going to need it. If you didn't use a syringe beforehand, then you'll need to use it before getting to the apartments as you're going to take a fall again. Head on over to the apartments first as we need to do water glitch. I guess I should explain on how to do water glitch before we get into it. This is an absolutely amazing trick that allows us to get essentially infinite stamina by not reducing stamina when jumping. First, you load into the level, go down the stairs, then dodge into the water and go towards this door right here. Our goal is to get on top of the door, which will trigger the water glitch. Look at the door, 
Go forward and look around 30 degrees upwards so you begin to move upwards. Once you go past this point here, you need to time your crouch and space bar. The timing is approximately one fifth of a second apart. You should jump once again to make sure that you don't lose stamina. Then head back out by getting in the water and moving back. Here it is again. Go in the water, get to the door, aim upwards. Once you reach the point, hit space and then crouch one fifth of a second apart, which should get you on top of the door. You can also do this trick for the pipe, which is closer to the exit but is kind of finicky, so I don't recommend to do this for new players. Now back to where we came from. Dodge jump over here and get the ladder and syringe. Make sure that one of the enemies are following you, as we'll need to place down a magical ladder. Crouch to the left side of this bloody stain on the wall and make the enemy try to hit you. The screen should go black and place a ladder. If the enemy hits you instead, reposition yourself and try again. Place the ladder once you get in and take a right. Head on through and do the water glitch trick. Remember, down the water, face the door, wait a bit, look up, space, crouch, get on top of the door and then off again. Remember that dodging and running still runs down the meter, so be careful. Go through the door and jump crouch stand on the ledge beside the door. Stay crouched and jump towards the ceiling and hit the door on the second floor. Then do the same thing again, but this time you have a much smaller window to hit the door. Then go to Simon's apartment. Grab the syringe on the floor and fall down and get into the corridor as fast as possible as to trigger the doctor's dialogue. Remember to have used the syringe up until now, otherwise you'll die if you fall down. Dodge jump to the end of the tunnel until you see two pillars sticking out from the side. Use the syringe while waiting. This is important. While waiting, I now want to talk about the implications of water glitch. Remember that thing that I said in chapter 0? The main part of speedrunning this game is using your stamina as efficiently as possible, prioritizing speed over anything else. Now take that rule and throw it right out the window. You're not playing Cry of Fear anymore, you're playing Half-Life. And the only thing that matters is you moving as fast as possible. So no more trying to save stamina by wall strafing. You will of course need to run in places where it is extremely difficult to dodge jump, but otherwise just dodge jump as much as possible. The teleport trigger disappears when the final subtitle goes away at the bottom of the screen. Go through the door and go to the back of the head. Then kill all four standing enemies and crouch through the gate. Be careful of the crawlers as they deal serious damage. Press E on the door, fall down and dodge jump to the other side. Then grab the fuse and get out. Walk or dodge through the plank and head out. Place the ladder if you haven't already. Now just go all the way back to the intersection where the other door is. We need the second fuse as well. This part of the speedrun is the perfect time to practice and show off your bunny hopping and alt jumping. Make sure you use it as much as possible. Go to the left and you can either jump past the giant or shoot him if you have the book. Break the planks and go. Kill this enemy and if you have a Glock shoot the person in the head and take their gun. Make sure you kill the guy on the left here as he will block you later on if you don't. Get this dude as well here. Dodge jump over and get the fuse. Then just head all the way back to the door. Remember, if you're running low on health, use a syringe. The stamina part of the syringe barely matters at this point.
Replace the two fuses. If you didn't pick up the phone battery, it will force you to do it now, but you can drop it right here after getting through the door. Dodge down the escalators and head through the subway tunnels as fast as possible. Enter the door through the wall here. If you go too far and see the other cart, then you might enter the wrong door. Just turn around and take the door again. Dodge jump to the other side, but do not go past this pole. Grab the sledgehammer and head back out. Going past the pole spawns some enemies, which will slow down your run. Break the wall and head on through. This is one of the locations that you can save if you're having trouble with it. I certainly have trouble with it. Dodge up the escalators, do some platforming, and get to the semi-flat part of the floor here. You'll have to dodge jump to the other side here. If you can't do it, take the normal route. It loses around 15 seconds. Go through the mental room and go left, right, forward, forward, or car, wheelchair, gun, book. Now comes the maze. This is the part you'll need to practice, as doing it YOLO style won't work. I will put up a map here that you can follow to get the fastest path out. There is also an even faster method that I discovered. If you take an alternate route like this, you can potentially skip the last monster that blocks you at the very end. The only problem with this is that you need to be extremely fast and have near perfect hops if you want to complete it. Even I can't do it, and I have the world record as of writing this. So once you feel comfortable dodge jumping consistently, you can learn this route. I said in my last tutorial that this part was going to be the least out of date. No, we've got more tricks to show off, but this only comes at the train section. Take the fuse and head on back. Before going in the door, use a syringe, regardless of how much health you have, as we'll take a big drop soon. When you hit the floor, just run to the yellow door, and when you get to it, use the syringe. Place the two fuses and go to the front of the train cart. Now comes an unskippable cutscene. Since we really don't want to wait, you can type host underscore frame rate 0.1 in the console, which will speed up the game very fast. This is okay as long as it doesn't change the live split timer. Once you see the subtitle, I'm confused, I'm just very confused, hit escape and type host frame rate 0 and make sure that you enter the command before the cutscene ends, otherwise the run could potentially get invalidated. If you're uncomfortable with it, just type the command earlier, or use a slower speed, like 0.05. Head on through the train. Dodge jump here. Kill this enemy and run. You can't really dodge jump in this location, so just run. Once you get to this room, go to this window where an enemy will pop through the window. Move into him like this from the front, then jump crouch out of the window and fall onto the floor. You're safe down here. Dodge jump to the end of the train and grab the foot by jumping and going right in front of the train here and then grabbing the foot. Then head back to the door over here and use the door by jumping towards it and using it. Head on back to the suitcase as usual. If you've got a syringe left, you can use it if you want, as you're going to lose it. This is a part that you're going to have to practice, since you can actually get stuck here, and it's very infuriating if you mess up here. Once you get out of the cart, press E on the floor to pick up a syringe. While the cutscene plays, you can technically still dodge jump forward. You can check your speed in the top right with Mad Simon. Head on through the door here. As of this point, there are no further differences between no unlockables and with unlockables. Although, if you still want to use unlockables, you can go to the right here and get your unlockables, but it is not needed. 
Once you see the light to the right over here, go into this dent in the wall and press E. There's a door here. Dodge jump as much as you can. You can get a boost by hitting the ramp. Collision with the floor is kind of wonky in some places here. Grab the doorknob and place it. Now comes rope cutting. This is another point you're going to have to practice. We need the girls to cut the rope for us instead of finding the scissors ourselves. Grab the branch here. This is important later on. Jump through the window and head on to the right. Stop up here and let the woman hit you. This will give you some extra time to set up the trick. Head to this corner here. Now look behind you. The woman should be going after you. When she comes over to you, you want to jump crouch. This should cut the rope. Remember to play around with it and just do the scissors normally if you're having serious trouble with it. Dodge jump through the forest, trying to avoid the falling enemies. It's also a good idea to practice this section. Get to the bunker. Dodge jump through. Don't crouch when you fall down the bottom as you can take fall damage. You can be up through the vents here. You can also be up here, but it is quite a bit more difficult. Be careful with the doors as they can kill you. However, if you have balls of steel, then you can just YOLO right through it. Whack the enemy two times or duke him and head on out. Dodge jump into the cutscene and then head into the asylum. Get to the bottom floor. You can use the door through the floor here. You have to be on this specific platform right below and use the left of the lamp above. The combination is 1, 2, 3, 4, yet again, doesn't change. It's a good idea to put the stick in your quick select as you'll be using it soon. Grab the pistol and head on out. Before going out, pull out your stick again so the woman doesn't use the gun against you. Now this is very important. Remember where the pistol is located in your hotbar. It should be the third, as the syringe will be the first one and the stick in your second. Keep this in mind. Head up to the doctor and wait for the cutscene to end. While waiting, I'll explain what's going on. We're going to duke the doctor by dropping the gun as soon as we give him the gun, at the same time. This will trigger the fourth ending, but will still allow us to keep the more powerful gun. In order to do this, we have to use the inventory drop command. You should have it binded to your F3 key for the third slot as chapter 0 told you to. But you can also pause the game and type inventory drop 3 into the console. After pressing yes to give him the gun, wait until Simon finishes his here, here. and then press F3 to drop the gun. Take note of the timing. Here. Don't do it too late or too early. Do not spam drop, as that will likely fail you. You'll know you've done it correctly when the next camera angle shows the gun on the floor. If you do not see the gun, you have failed, and must use the Glock instead. If you can't do this part, you can use the Glock instead, but will lose a good amount of time. 5 shots for the P345 against 8 shots for the Glock. Open the gate and get the key. This door is very finicky and can sometimes get you on the wrong side of the door. Don't pick up the gun just yet. Go to the right and kill the enemy here. Then go in here, grab the syringe and kill the second enemy. Go into the small room, pick up the syringe and bind your stick to quick use if you haven't already. Now comes the tablet. There is a telephone that we need to get the number on by getting two pieces of a tablet and combining them together. However, we can find out the number by just using the first piece of the tablet. We do this by looking at the bottom left part of the tablet. They are in Roman numerals. There are three different codes. If the bottom left is a 1, then the code is 511-77816. If the bottom left is a 7, then the code is 511-73979. If the bottom left is a 9, then the code is 511-73896. If you're having trouble forgetting these, I recommend putting them on a piece of paper or a sticky note to remember them. 
Also, if you're slightly low on health here, I recommend that you use a syringe as the doctor can put you in a staggered state very easily. Plus, we've got a lot of syringes. Head back to the telephone. Type in the code and press the R to ring it. Once you've done that and the cutscene starts to play, you can lower your field of view by going into the console and typing CL underscore FOV multiplier 0.2 and turning it back to 1.3 or the one you've set yourself once you've seen the code. Remember the code carefully as it won't be saved to notes. Get back out. Get the pistol from the ground and switch back to your stick. Go upstairs and kill the enemy. Then type in the code. If you want to, you can save here. This will allow you to reload if you got a bad doctor fight. Equip your pistol. Take the syringe here and then go over here and grab all of the items. If you didn't get the powerful pistol back in the doctor cutscene, pick up the Glock instead. Dodge jump to the other side while having your pistol out. Grab this syringe, then reload your gun and go into the cutscene. Your gun should be loaded after this cutscene. Find out where the doctor is located. Aim down your sights for improved stability. The doctor can do three things. Show himself briefly, move position, or show himself for a long period of time. The best outcome is for him to show himself for a long period of time as much as possible. If you're having the doctor switch position constantly and your time isn't doing great, I recommend loading your save if you did save outside the doctor. When the cutscene goes away from the flashback to real time, you can drop the stick from your inventory if you haven't already, and also to censor the death if you wish. Grab the key and his gun ammo if you want, and get out. You can grab a syringe here if you want. Head down the staircase. You can use the outside of the door here through the wall. It doesn't move you to the other side, but it will teleport you to the door where you can use the key. Since we have infinite stamina, I recommend you not use your syringe right away, unless you're low on health. Additionally, syringes regen full stamina regardless of health, which will be useful later. This is the boat section, one of the nicest places in Cryfear. For casual users, for us it's a nightmare, as it takes forever. If you find a way to skip this part, it'll be an absolutely amazing time save. Grab the syringe from the floor here. Duke the enemy by standing on the left and dodge jumping to the right. Be careful jumping here as the roof can stop your jump, so you want to crouch while being in the air. Grab the syringe here and fall down. Go on top of the ledge on the left and dodge jump over the enemy, then do it for the other enemy over here. For the third enemy, just shoot two bullets into him. Switch to your syringe. If you're low on stamina or health, use a syringe. If not, don't. This is the part where we'll be spamming the living daylight out of them. We need to time Simon's hand movements moving forward with the sprint key. Whenever we sprint while he's moving his hands out, we get a small boost forward. If your field of view is lower than 1.3, then this might be hard to do. So increase your field of view here if needed. You can take the risky route and only go up two times up for air or you can do it three times for safety. When you get out of the water, you will no longer have water glitch, so that means jumping decreases your stamina. Use as many syringes as possible, but make sure that you have at least three when you finish the level. Go over and pick up the key and dodge jump around the corner before the saw runner sees you, so he doesn't chase you. You're almost finished now. Now use the key and head on through. Since we have at least 3 syringes, we want to use them as much as possible before finishing the game. Start by dodge jumping over and making your way to the first door. Keep going even though you have no stamina left. If you have more than 3 syringes, you can use more here if you're not going fast enough. If you only have 3 syringes here, don't use them constantly. Before you enter the door, use a syringe. When you get around this area, use a syringe when you hit the floor so you save time crawling through this bit. Drop your gun at this point. Finally, keep moving towards Simon's house. Before entering the auto look trigger, align your b-hop so that you go against the hedge. Then without moving your mouse or pressing any keys, keep jumping with your speed so that you go in the same direction. 
use the syringe here and run to the door. Go to Simon's room and start the cutscene. Wait for the cutscene to finish. Do not press any buttons while waiting for the cutscene to end, as it can trigger a soft lock. Once the cutscene is nearly done, go to the console and type FPS underscore max 20 to lower your frame rate. This will make you go slightly faster with the next trick. Instead of moving forward by holding down W, you want to tap W every half second or so, which will move you much faster. If Simon doesn't appear in the door, you can get to chapter 8. If Simon doesn't appear in the door and you get to chapter 8, then you did not kill Carcass properly or did not give the doctor the gun. If you have lowered your advanced settings, then the lights that appear in the level might not appear for you. Only their light appears. They still have collision, so be careful where they are. There's one right here which can block many people. Once you enter this bit right here, stop and start to go backwards. Simon will run fast towards you and you have to spam the gun in order to kill him. You need to do it fast as you can die very easily here. Once you've killed him, the run is over and you can rest. You can type seal underscore fast credits one in the console to make the end credits go faster and type host underscore frame rate 0.1 to get to the end screen faster. Do not end or split your recording here, wait until the end. Due to the buggy nature of the end screen, it might not show, but you still have to show that it was bugged in your final run. The timer will automatically stop and that will be the time to send to speedrun.com for your time without loads. Congratulations, you're finished. Stop your recording in OBS and take the file and upload it to YouTube. Thereafter, you can link your run on speedrun.com leaderboards and show that you've speedrun Cry of Fear. Special thanks to Windows CM, Alex Magnum and Darla for translating this into Russian. They've done a great job as Nick C. Shield's tutorial is getting kind of old. Thank you for watching. This has been quite in the making for some time. The previous tutorial got out of date in less than two years and this tutorial is, uh, is likely to as well. So if it's been some time since this video is out, you might want to check out the Discord server for new tricks. You can find it in the description or go to speedrun.com. That's all. See you for next time or I don't know what I'm going to do after this video. Also, while I was making this video, uh, Ricky beat my record by one second. Ugh.